This is my working PC, a 9900K cooled by an Acer Blizzard 360, tuned with a couple of Nokia and FF12s. And then there is this, the GameWord RDX 2080 Ti Phoenix, tailor-made to give me an aneurysm. This episode is brought to you by CDCovers.com. CDCovers offers a wide variety of software or game keys for a fraction of their usual retail price. You can get your usual PC game codes or even library codes for things like Steam, Uplay and Origin. But the most important part for us are the software codes. Here we can get software activation codes for things like MS Office or Windows 10 for a ridiculously cheap price. And right now you can also use the promo code TS20 to get a 20% discount to make the already cheap Windows 10 license even cheaper. If you want to get that nasty activation message away, make sure to head down to the links in the description below and don't forget to use the promo code TS20 for a 20% discount. Okay, so I have a really, really annoying issue. No, it's not even an issue. This, this piece of crap prevents me from working. Whoa, all the time. Okay, so we have a couple of issues inside of this rig. First off, my i9, it thermal throttles. I tried my best by using the biggest all-in-one I had, but in the end, the front airflow of this case is just... meh. So I'm not even able to keep it at 5 GHz all the time. 4.8, 4.9 is okay, but that's basically it. Stop doing that! But that's not even the reason why this is sucking the life out of me. It's, it's this goddamn GPU. And it's probably even my own fault. Back then, when I got this card, the first thing I did was to the first thing I did was to install an alpha cool water block on it. Fast forward two years, where I took it apart, reinstalled the original air cooler on it, and now it's rendering the exact video that I used to talk shit about it. The circle of life. So there is the slight possibility that when I installed the Alpha Cool Water Block, I miscut one of the thermal pads and was forced to use one of the original ones. This could theoretically result in a slightly pressed together pad that doesn't make enough contact now. Maybe that happens, maybe it's a broken fan controller, we will never know, I will take it into my grave. But I'm not here to point fingers at anybody, probably because the only one I could point it to is myself, but I want to solve this. So when the PC is completely idling, it runs just fine, completely quiet. The issue starts when there is a tiny bit of load. Then the GPU just sporadically decides to ramp up one of the fans and... You don't even need a lot of load. Having Photoshop or... You don't even need a lot of load. Having Photoshop or Premiere Pro just running in the background is more than enough. And at that point, I am sitting here recording a video while Mr. Hammerade over here decides that I need to repeat the whole take. So the obvious fix for that would be to just buy a new set of thermal pads and redo the whole work. But I'm not gonna do that. A. It will be... A. It will be hard to find the exact ones for this card and B, I really do not want to take the card apart and if I can find a way to fix it without taking it apart, you can bet your ass I want to try that. Okay, setting a better fan curve won't fix the issue. The card says it is running somewhere between 65 66 degrees C, by no means a reason to ramp up those fans to 3000 RPM. And even if I set the fan to a static 70%, it just overrides that and blows up. So I would assume that there is a tiny spot somewhere on the GPU where I cannot even say where and how hard, and if there is a tiny bit of load, it is just enough to make that tiny spot go hard enough to then ramp up the fans and annoy me. But there is another underlying issue here. The i9 runs really, really hard, and all of that hot air is then just blowing straight onto the GPU. So not only does the 2080 Ti probably have a hotspot somewhere, but the air it uses to cool itself down is really hot to begin with. 
this is basically just problems stacked on each other. So this morning I was annoyed again and I decided to test something. This case may not have any bottom intake for the GPU, but there are cases that have some. And my theory is, if I have a bottom intake, install some fans on there and use them at a slow speed to naturally force cold air through the GPU, it could be just enough to prevent that ramping. If I now take one or two of my P12, position them just in front of the GPU, and just let them spin at somewhat around 50%, Look what happens. Instant cooldown. And, and my videos are not even that improvised. I tested this this morning and it, it freaking works. And to prove it, now let's just look what happens if I turn the fans back off again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now happily, I just wrapped up the review about the Intertech C701 Panorama, which has bottom intake. It kind of annoys me that I lose my USB-C in the front because I kind of need it, but A, I have cold air intake for the GPU, and B, I have way better air intake for the CPU. So in the end, I might even solve two problems with one simple solution. And maybe I will even be able to get that i9 to 5 GHz. Maybe. I don't know. We will see. Do you hear that? Yeah, me neither. Okay, a lot has happened since yesterday. So originally the plan was to use six of these Acer Hurricane fans. I know they are not the best performing fans, but I thought six of them should be alright. It was even worse. It was louder and it was harder at the same damn time. Now that didn't make any sense to me because the case comes with way better airflow than the one I used before. That being said, before that, I was using Noctua NFF12s, and as we've seen in the Blizzard review, those Hurricane fans look pretty, but that's really it. So my hopes were shattered, and I was pissed off, and, and I just went home. Then this morning I woke up, and I was like, nope, I'm done, let's pump this damn thing with optics. So I came back, smashed three Bionics P120s in the top, three P12 ARGBs on the radiator, and two Noctua NFF12s in the bottom, cause I ran out of optics. As much as I liked the case, it was just annoying that I was forced to install the GPU vertically because of how much that damn radiator sticks out. Though it shouldn't make that much of a difference because of those bottom fans. And the result of this... Oh, peace and quiet. Followed by a thousand questions. Why are the GPU temps higher than before? And if that's true, why is the ramping gone? That... it, it doesn't make sense. When I put on the same load as before, the GPU temps can go up to 70 degrees C, but the ramping is gone. H how is that possible? Maybe, maybe the notches in the bottom are able to hit exactly that one spot that is getting too hot. I, I don't know, and to be honest, I, I don't care anymore. I'm done with the damn cord. I did all of this just to get rid of that, that fan ramping. 
It's gone, so I don't care why the card is harder, my brain is broken and at the damn call probably too. So to end the video in a informative way, if you know that you have a thermal pad issue in the GPU, don't be like me, just fix it, this is stupid. But hey, using Arctix had another positive effect. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I, I really can't waste another thought on this machine, it's, it's just too depressing, so bye bye.